We are now outside of the old building that was home to Mikveh Israel for many years on Broad Street, Broad and York. I'm reminded when I look at this Greco-Roman building of the Talmudic story where the rabbis tell us that from the ashes of the destruction of the Second Temple, specks of the ashes fell in different parts of the world as the diaspora dispersed and synagogues were built where the specks had fallen. And indeed, a great synagogue had been built, Mikveh Israel. And it was ordained that great men would lead these synagogues. Great men like Leon Levy. Aspects of uh, Mikveh Israel to me are very near, they're very dear, they're very, I guess they go back to my earliest childhood. He has set the tradition for us to follow of remembering his family, his parents. He's embraced everybody that has walked through those doors over the last 30 plus years and he makes everybody feel special and at home and in, always invites everybody to come back and back and back again. As a child I came with my mother and my father. I never knew if my parents were actually official members or not, they just went. It's helped to create an atmosphere at the synagogue where it's truly a family and that family tradition will continue. He just believes that tradition is very important in his family. We are very big on tradition and like to continue what we know from where we've been and how that's going to influence us going forward. This is a place that he went with his father and this is a place that he was bar mitzvah. This is where he learned Hebrew and learned how to pray and learn the values and customs of the Jewish tradition. Those aspects that he took from his relationship from his father, I think correlated into why he wanted to do what he did because he had tremendous respect for his father. It reminds me of a marathon runner as opposed to a sprinter. Somebody who can persevere over long distances, has the right type of attitude and training. He brought me into the synagogue. It was immediately a spiritual love affair for myself and the majestic service that we have just gets into your soul. And Leon and myself, we feel very devoted to the synagogue to continue the tradition of the service and our involvement will still be ongoing forever and ever, we hope. Around 1974, I was uh, invited to sit on the, as a member of the board. The invitation was uh, very warming to me because uh, I was the first of my family to have any involvement with Mikva Israel other than in attendance. I remember my very, very first acknowledgement of Parnas after being elected, the thrill and the honor that I had being selected, specifically because I was not one of the Talmudic scholars, or nor am I a Talmudic scholar that would make qualify for that job. The relationship my father has with the synagogue, which is what he calls his first job, and he calls his actual employment his second job. So I don't know if he looks at that as his relationship with God as his first job, or the duty and the obligation that he feels of the responsibility of running the synagogue as a business person and a leader that he is. He sees his place as he's being led by God in yes. this process. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like he is doing this to gain some sort of reward. He never became president for that reason. Mm -hmm. I mean. God had wanted him to do this. In 1967, I had a life-altering event that happened to myself, my wife. It was not the healthiest times for me, emotionally and physically. A little bit of a struggle financially. Two children, a wife, and the pregnancy that Fran had with uh, David was uh, not smooth at all. One night, I carried her into Jefferson Hospital. Carried her to Jefferson Hospital from the car an emergency. Didn't think she'd make the night. My world just collapsed and shattered. Now what does this have to do? You asked me a question where my beliefs came in with 
my Jewish faith, with God, with synagogue. When people are in crisis, they resolve themselves with their maker. I've always been a strong believer in God. When everything fails as human, you pray. And I prayed, and I prayed. And when you pray, you got to give something in return, beside words. You make a commitment, hopefully to be a better person, to make this a better place in this world, to do something. And my legacy to me, to God, would be if I could get out of this crisis and help me, I'll try to build a temple. And somehow this evolved, this temple, this Big for Israel business evolved, that God put it on my lap. Since that time, I've had an angel on my shoulder. And the power of prayer is important, and the power of commitment is just as important. The purpose of this building was to be a dual function, be a synagogue and museum of American Jewish history. It wasn't called National Museum, it was called Museum of American Jewish History. The museum at that time had all intent to be run by the synagogue. Its officers were to be members of the synagogue board and uh, it was always the intent that it would be one institution with two separate entities. Things never go the way they're planned. That's why you need insurance. The museum would not exist uh, but for Mikveh Israel. Mikveh Israel literally created the museum in 1976. So it's very important for that history to be acknowledged and for people to understand that. They had a wonderful, beautiful, huge building that they're running as a separate enterprise. The originator of that enterprise is Mikveh Israel. Mikveh Israel, of course, was a much more significant institution. Uh, Mikveh Israel has been around since 1740. The museum was less important, uh, let us say, in its early years. There has been nothing here that has gone on that he has not been aware of and has um, been involved with. He is here 24-7. Uh, he gives of himself in every which way and Mikveh Israel has been lucky to have. You can always count on Leon and everything he has ever done has always been for the good of the synagogue, the future of the synagogue, and he always brings the past of the synagogue into his future. He put his life, his heart, his soul in the synagogue, and uh, in a way is an inspiration for me for really uh, carrying my work. This past Yom Kippur, Victor, Benjamin, and I were at the evening service, the last part of Yom Kippur. They were doing the priestly blessings, Leon had Victor come up and he wrapped his towels around Victor and then Victor in turn had Benjamin come up and he wrapped his towels around Benjamin. But what was amazing to me that Leon's towels was big enough to wrap around Victor and Benjamin and it was the most beautiful moment I've ever experienced to see three generations together under one towels praying was just a moment I'll never forget. When I think of Leon, I think of that moment. On Simcha Torah, the parasha states, Vezot Habracha. Moses gives his blessings to the Jewish people, and regarding the Levi, he said, God blesses his wealth and accepts his handiwork. You are fulfilling this quote by your generosity both monetarily and your actions of being a great leader in this synagogue and community. Leon is a guy who carries himself always as a proud, committed, knowledgeable Jew. He does that in his civic responsibilities, he does that in his uh, business life, and I happen to think that's a wonderful model. That's commendable, it's special, and as I say, it's an example. Leon sets a powerful example. It's hard to even think of Nick Vizrael not being under his leadership. Everyone is important. Not just the one who prays the loudest. Everyone is important. That would be my message. Seeing how successful he's been with his business, 
has pretty much set the standard for me and my cousins. I have a big expectation to live up to because he was so involved with it that I should be involved in the Jewish community as well. I kind of want to like not really live up to that expectation but follow his footsteps in the way he did it. You know, have a lot of leadership role, especially in the Jewish community. It's time for me to step on and hopefully have some better, younger leadership come on that will uh, lead us to the next millennium. It's hard to imagine Mikva Israel without Leon Levy at its helm. Leon Levy is the face of Mikva Israel, a Turkish Sephardic immigrant family that came to the United States with Leon working hard for the American dream but never abandoning the Jewish dream of preservation and passing the legacy on. God bless. You are the best. I love him and he's a great man. He's a great guy. That's it. Uh, he's taught me that you should always respect people, always follow the tradition, always stay connected with your synagogue, and try to go to services as often as you can, and to always do the right thing. He's a great man. He gives advice a lot how to um, be successful in life and what to do and what not to do. Choose what you want to choose and don't just choose it because someone else is choosing it. On Rosh Hashanah, it's a Jewish holiday. When I went to his house for the first day of Rosh Hashanah, I said I wanted to blow the shofar and he taught me how to do it. And then I asked him, can I blow the shofar tomorrow? And he said yes. And then I blew the shofar the next day. Leon, you have to stick around with me because I need you.